a little bit crunchy, like a snack. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. <laughs> that's right, I said snack. Apparently that's a pork rind snack. <laughs> Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. For those of you that are new here, my name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the new Natasha Denona bronze collection. This is her most recent one. It launched last week. And I did pick up the eyeshadow palette, the face palette, and then two out of the three glosses. So I grabbed almost everything. I, gra I grabbed, honestly, what I gravitate towards the most. And the one thing that I just really wasn't feeling was the lightest toned gloss. So I just kind of Eh, didn't need that. Before we get going into all the specifics and, you know, again, getting into the Denona side of things, I did just want to pause and say welcome to the channel again if you are new here. I do put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They go up around 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. So if you like having something to watch bright and early, again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, make sure you subscribe, stick around, hit the bell, all the good things, and hopefully YouTube doesn't unsubscribe you and it actually tells you when I upload. So big bonus there. If you're looking for even more fun, more interaction, more day-to-day -day life outside of YouTube. I do encourage you to check me out on Instagram and on Twitter. They will both be linked down below. I am way more active over on my Instagram just because it's a lot more relational. So whether it's, you know, just day-to-day -day type stuff, me and my Insta stories, plus size fashion, makeup photos, or even makeup application, like little IGTV videos, I'm really into all of that. And I, I just love like the, the, um, feel of Instagram for those type of things. So definitely check me out. Again, they will both be listed down below. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and talk about today's video because I'm actually going to do it a little different than I normally would for a collection like this. Um, for those of you that are new here, again, I have been a review channel. I've been on YouTube for over three years at this point. And a lot of that was like, especially in the beginning, it was very um, just reviews. It was always straight reviews. And for today's video, I got to thinking like there has already been just, I mean, in the last couple of days since this launch, there's already been so many first impressions, so many opinions, so many just dedicated reviews to this collection that I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I thought it would be cool to just sit down and we're going to play with this. Obviously, we're going to talk about it, but I wanted to do my full face with you guys and do it more maybe in like a get ready with me kind of style where we can talk. We're going to hang out. I'm going to pull some products I haven't used in a long time. And we're just going to, I don't know, we're just going to hang out and have a good time. And of course, I'd love to hear from you guys down below. So let me know in the comments if you like like this style, if you were cool with it, if it was something, you know, a little bit fun, a little different, or if you'd prefer to just have it be the classic review style, that's fine too. Just leave me all of your thoughts and feedback down in the comments. So from here, let's go ahead. We're going to zoom the camera in and we're going to get started. All right, beautiful people. So for today, I just got done putting the primer on because I want to let it really soak in. This is the YSL Touch Eclat Blurring Primer. And I want to say this one um, was actually like a, a highly rated one amongst like a lot of bigger gurus. And I never would commit to purchasing it, like purchasing a full size. I'm like, absolutely not. What is it? Like $120 or some shit? No, thank you. But I ended up getting this primer, like maybe six months, eight months, a year ago, something like that from Nordstrom's or Macy's, one of those fancy ass places. But anyways, they ended up sending me a sample, moral of the story. And I've actually gotten so much use out of this. Like I've used this product or this, this little sample so many times because a little bit of this goes a long way. And it's just, it's actually a really nice primer. Like it is very smoothing. It feels amazing on the skin. And what I love about it the most is that it doesn't like ball up or get um, like any weird pill consistency. It has like a, a blurring effect that you can actually feel, if that makes sense. And it just feels so good. And then as it settles in, it doesn't cause like any weirdness over like my more textured areas on both cheeks. It just feels really nice. And for foundation, I thought it would be fun, you know, seeing how we're just doing something a little different anyways. I thought it'd be fun to play around with a little Dior Air Flash. This is their spray foundation. So for those of you that don't, uh, don't know or are not familiar, this one is like a spray can. And I have it in the shade. 1N100 and um, I've used it before in the past. This is a repurchase that I picked up probably six months ago or so and um, it's just it's a beautiful foundation. It works really well and I thought we would you know play with it again today. So I'm just gonna take and spray it onto my sponge here. Might be a little too dark for me because <laughs> almost all Dior shades are too dark for me. That's just like a standard. But uh, I really do love the like texture, the consistency of this. It looks so beautiful on the skin and it's just such a light application, like a very thin layer of it. And for concealer, I picked one I definitely haven't used in a while. This is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer in Fair Rose. And when this launched, I was actually a big fan. I used it a lot. I probably went through like a full tube and it looks really really nice actually up against this foundation, which kind of shocks me because uh, it does have a little bit more of a pinky undertone to it, but it works well with the, uh, with the foundation. It looks good. And then really quickly, 
Before we move any farther, y'all know I gotta get these under eyes set. This is just a freckle of the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Setting Powder. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic powder. All right, you guys, so now that I'm here and my under eyes are set down, now I can actually calm down and like enjoy the get ready with me process. But am I the only person? I'm just, I'm throwing this out there whether you film or you don't film. Whenever I'm getting ready, like primer, foundation, concealer, setting my under eyes, if I don't do those steps very quickly, they start to like dry down in between the steps. And let me tell you, they look hot, fire, garbage, crepey, nasty <laughs> by the time it's all said and done. And I just, I don't know, I have a hard time I'm stopping in between those steps because I need those to like look good. I need the base to be laid and slayed so that way I can go on with the rest. I'm sorry that the first part was kind of a cannonball effect, you know, just trying to get it done. But now that we're here, like I said, we can relax a little bit and I'm gonna start going in with cream products, which we will be getting into the bronze cheek palette here in just a second. But there is no cream bronzer in there, obviously. So we're gonna be playing around with the Fenty Cream Bronzer. This is in the shade Butter Biscuit. And to apply it, I'm gonna be using this e.l.f. brush here, the one that Samantha Ravendahl recommends. This is the Airbrush Stipple Brush. And for those of you that missed that video, by the way, I did test out um, Samantha Ravendahl's favorite makeup. It's a new series that I started. I'll link it up here. It was super fun. And it was just, I don't know, it's, it's cool because doing videos like that, I try to pick people like when I, when I you know decide you know who my muse is going to be for that video whether it's Samantha Ravendahl or the other ones that I have coming up I try to pick people that I know either a you guys really enjoy watching or people that have like a very different makeup taste or a makeup aesthetic than me because I think it's fun to you know just try out things from people that are nothing like me whether it's their type of skin the way they wear their makeup the way that they apply it whatever the case is I just find a lot of fun in like the diversity of makeup and really testing it out. And that video was no exception, like testing out some of her stuff. It's makeup that I never would have tested. I never would have looked sideways at. And I'm so glad that I did because they're just, they're so good. Like the, like this brush, this is a great example. It's amazing. It's so good for cream products. It buffs in beautifully and it's from e.l.f. It's like $8 or $10, something like that. It's so affordable and it's just super, super good. Also, I went ahead and I moved the camera out just now because I was looking all kinds of damn crazy up close. I don't know if it's just my monitor or not. But y'all, it was not a good look. I had like these weird like <laughs> white patches on my face coming in from the windows and shit. Not a look. Anyways, from there we can go ahead and we can finally start talking about this little fella. This is the Natasha Denona Bronze Cheek Face Glow Palette. And it says, I'm on beauty list right now. It says that this retails for $55. And it says, create sun-kissed, dipped in bronze looks with this multi-purpose face and cheek palette. As far as the component goes, I do think it looks really pretty. Like I don't have any issues with the aesthetic. I'm not always a huge fan though, if I'm being like honest, paying $55 for something like this and having it be so like lightweight and so plastic. I wish it had like a little bit more heft to it, my personal opinion, but I want to go through really quickly and we're going to swatch it. All right, you guys. So I, I, I'm so, I'm having so many issues. Okay. First of all, this is the palette. I just swatched it. These top two up here are the cream shades. And then these are the two regular powdered shades and I have multiple issues. So let's start with the creams. These two right here look so unbelievably disappointing. I don't know if it's just me, but like this right here is like a duochrome pink kind of cream highlight situation. Okay, it's fine, whatever. This one right here is like a cream blush. Mm, why? It looks just like a slightly deeper toned highlight, not a blush, but whatever. Uh, then we get into these two shades and this one right here is super, hold on, let me, I don't wanna get these names wrong because they got me feeling some kind of way. That one is Super Glow Bronze. Okay, this one, Super Glow Bronze. And then the one underneath of it, that one, it is uh, Super Glow Nude. Super Glow Nude. Um, first of all, I hate it, and I've talked about this a thousand times, I hate it when any cosmetic company ever says a color is nude because a color is not nude. Everyone's nude is different. Like, what well, I... That's just a pet peeve for me personally. So I already was feeling some kind of way about it because I just don't like the insinuation. And then I feel it and it just got some kind of like weird, chunky, nasty, I don't, I don't know. It's like, don't get me wrong. If you build it up, like I guess it looks okay. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Paige, stop trying to make excuses. It really doesn't feel okay. It feels weird. I don't, mm, 
I don't think I like these. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm kind of bummed right now. Okay, so we're not loving <laughs> the face palette. Again, it's $55, and I feel like legit this could have been something I got from e.l.f. Um, and I'm not trying to be shady. Like, e.l.f. has got some good shit, but, like, this does not feel like $55, even in the slightest. Does, does this, I'm just gonna ask you guys, does this say blush to anybody right here? If you look at that, are you like, oh, wow, there's a blush shade, a bounce cream blush? No, <laughs> it looks like a friggin' highlight. We're gonna stop complaining. We're just gonna apply it. I just put a little bit here on the butt of my sponge, which, by the way, this is a Kaleido sponge. They sent this to me in PR. And I've been using it a ton. I actually really like it. It's got a good amount, like a good density to it. It feels nice. And I love using this little butt right here for blush application. Wait a second. <laughs> Did that just make my, my face look like dirty? Like, does my cheek just look like I literally swiped dirt on it just now? Oh. <gasps> You did me so dirty, Denona. Guys, we're just gonna go full on. We're just gonna do it. We're gonna, we're really gonna just go both sides. It's just where we're at. You said it's a cream blush, all right? Maybe it was only meant to be a veiling cream blush, but I took cream blush as cream blush, so we're just gonna really commit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> why why and also you know what while I'm just being a complainy little bitch can we just talk about it can we just get really real for a second Denona when are we gonna start having more than one of these damn palettes like this now okay well first of all there's no saving this palette okay this palette is just hot fire garbage like I'm I'm not really impressed about anything thus far but for real when are we gonna get on board with this realization that like when we come out with a face palette okay a face palette I don't know if you know this but everybody's face is a different damn color so when are we gonna come on board with the fact that like we need more than one damn face shade palette like I don't I don't understand how this even logically makes sense maybe that's just like a me thing oh <laughs> what is this what is this oh <gasps> you guys I was trying to be good but what is this <gasps> can you see hold on we need to just talk about this can you see that oh <gasps> what even is this hot fire garbage oh my god it like pilled all over the place <laughs> I don't like it <sighs> I'm gonna need a minute okay uh let's go ahead we're just gonna take our little finger here I'm so pissed right now you guys I'm gonna take my finger I'm gonna take just this little guy right here and let's just apply maybe I was just a little too aggressive with my sponge so I'm just gonna take and do a little bit of this just gonna pat it in, pat, 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 pat. We're not gonna get angry. What? <laughs> what is happening, you guys? I seriously, am I getting punked right now? Like, I'm, I'm really starting to wonder if somebody's messing with me. This is so unbelievably not cute. <laughs> like, I can't even express to you. Oh my god, this, by the way, is, this is my second round. Okay, I've, I've applied a fair amount of this at this point, and like. I don't understand, like, what's the goal? What am I, can you, somebody please tell me what am I trying to accomplish here? And the only way that I can think to describe this, and I hope, I, I don't know how this is, if it's gonna make sense or not, but this consistency, okay, of this highlight is such a thin feeling. And for being such a thin, slippery feel, it goes on the skin incredibly thick and chunky looking. Like, that's the only way I can describe it, especially up in this region where I feel like a lot of people, myself included, do have more texture. All right, so super quick, guys, we have to do a little bit of work. We need to desperately fix what's happening on my face because these cheeks, <laughs> they're not good. I don't like them, I'm sorry. They might look okay on camera, but just so you know, in real life, they are not okay. Okay, so we're gonna take a little bit of my Honest um, Blush here. This is their Peony Pink Cream Blush. And I'm gonna take just a freckle of this on my sponge, and I'm gonna apply just a little bit, just over top of that other god-awful not blush blush from their uh, Denona palette. So from here, guys, we're just gonna move on. We're not gonna keep looking back and, and talking about how absolutely god-awful that was. Uh, we're gonna set the rest of the face. So I'm just gonna take some of this powder from uh, Charlotte Tilbury. Again, this is the uh, magic setting powder that I use to set the under eyes. And I'm gonna take my sponge and ever so gently kind of press this in. All right, you guys, so we're good, we're set down, and I'm gonna go in now with bronzer, which I know a lot of people don't necessarily get down, they don't like it, but I love going in after I set my face because I am combo leaning oily. I love going in and using a powder bronzer and a powder blush and a powder highlight on top of the other like cream areas because I just feel like, I don't know, they pop really well. Again, it is totally personal preference. Everybody's kind of got their own, their own vibe for that. If you don't like to set it, if you do whatever you like to do is totally fine but for me it just works really well not only with like the color and the shaping of the products but also with the, how they wear and whatnot throughout the day so I pulled
pulled this guy out of my collection. This is from Pure, and this is the Bronzing Act Matte Bronzing Powder in the shade Light. I'm just gonna work a little bit of this because obviously I don't need, you know, a lot. I did go in with a bronzer, but I just love, oh wow, my God, does it, damn, this smells good. Holy, dude, I am so hungry right now in my stomach. I didn't even, oh, bitch. <laughs> I didn't even notice I was this hungry until right now. Oh, honey. I could just eat this damn bronzer. Don't do it. Should you do it? Oh, my God. See, if I don't do it, I'm going to be like, you should have done it. What if I just did like a little bit, like I dipped my finger in it, you know? Mm -mm. doesn't taste nearly as good as it smells. It doesn't taste nearly as good as it smells. As she's talking about a bronzer. Paige, I can't wait, did I just do that for real? <laughs> I just did that for real, you guys. <laughs> also, am I the only person that this just occurred to? I don't know why it just occurred to me, but I think it's so, oh, by the way, I'm going in with, going in with blush. This is the uh, Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur in the shade Pink Sky. It's super duper pretty. It's gonna give me that nice little pop of pink that I want on my cheeks. Just a little, ooh, like I wanna liven them up, just a freckle. And I love these blushes. Oh my God, Coral Cove is my favorite shade, but I thought for today, the pink one would just give me that like little bit of lift that I needed. All right guys, so it's time for brows and I'm gonna go in with my powder brow. This is the Foolproof Brow Powder from Benefit. And this is in the shade three. So you can see it's like half a little bit lighter, half a little bit deeper for the tail. And I really love using brow powders. I just haven't used them in such a long time. So I thought it would be a cool, um, a cool option for today. So I'm just gonna dip in here. I'm gonna dip into both shades, the lighter and the darker, just kind of mix them together. And I'm gonna be applying this with the Morphe JS7. Wow, I have not used a brow powder in so freaking long, you guys. Look at how fast that was, holy Jesus. And for brow gel, I'm just gonna go in with the Hourglass Brow Gel. This is in the shade Soft Brunette. I haven't used this one in a while. All right, guys, so I think that is it for the brows. I haven't like sculpted them out or anything yet, but I think they look pretty good. And let's get in to, I need to put some concealer on and then we can get into the eyeshadow palette. Oh, oh my God, I didn't even realize we were this close. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Eyeshadow palette, yes, please. All right, so actually pause really quickly, two things. Number one, had to get rid and send like a cease and desist to the butthole lip because that was not a good situation. It looked so crusty and so many different types of busty. And then number two, my face, like my skin, desperately needs a setting spray. For some reason, it just looks so dry and so cracked. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my Catrice Dewy Glow setting spray. Give me that, uh, okay. God, you guys, the packaging is so good. Look at this. Oh, it's so satisfying. <gasps> oh, I love this color story so much. Oh my God, it's so basic. It's so me. Okay, let's go ahead. We're just gonna play around with it. Oh, it's, that's, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys, this is so me, it's scary. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this uh, entire palette. It's been a long time since I've swatched a whole palette. I'm gonna need a new makeup wipe. <gasps> oh, ooh. I don't know what that was. Oh, I can't care. Oh, look at these colors. Look at, ooh, look at them. Just look at them, yes. Oh my God, look at how deep, <gasps> deep and sultry and sexy we are. Yes, honey. I need a new makeup wipe. Oh, no, no fall, do not fall. Oh shit, it fell. <laughs> uh -huh, story of my life. Ooh, that one's glidey like butter. Oh, I like glidey butter. Oh my God, I love peanut butter. Guys, I've been on a peanut butter kick lately. Oh, oh, oh baby. Ooh, I love that pinky red, whatever that is. Oh, oh that's beautiful. And it is a duochrome. <gasps> my eyes do not deceive. It is a duochrome. <gasps> Ooh, I like. Okay, All right, so here's what we're gonna do now that we've, you know, swatched the entire arm and it looks gorgeous. Um, I kind of have like 13 different directions that I would love to go. So from here, before I can go in, obviously, and do eyeshadow, I am gonna take some of my e.l.f. concealer, um, just the same camo concealer I used under my eyes and to shape out the face. And I'm gonna use just a little bit of this to shape out my brows, make sure that they look good and crisp. And then and crisp, like as in a crisp line, not like crispy, like the rest of my damn face is looking right now. It's looking a little bit crispy. A little bit crunchy, like a snack. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. <laughs> That's right, I said snack. Apparently that's a pork rind snack. <laughs> All right, guys, so I think now that we're finally ready to start playing with some shadows, I'm gonna go in pretty timid with the first shade Sundown right here, and I'm just gonna use that as a light, 
Um, oh, wow, that's pretty. Um, I'm going to use this as a light transition shade and more so focus it like right along my upper orbital bone. So just like right up in that area. And I'm taking this on the Kaleidos S2 brush. Has a really great shape for um, for this part of my eye, especially because I have hooded eyes. I think because I am testing out this palette today and we're kind of doing like a first impression, I want to make sure I can keep using other shades. So I'm going to leave that shade by itself in the front right there. And then to connect it and bring it the rest of the way down, I'm going to take the shade Ridge right here. And this one is more of like a mustard color. I'm taking it on the same brush. And I'm going to use this to kind of follow through but it's gonna give me a little bit more of that brown depth versus the uh, orangey depth that Sundown had. Also, a little bit of that shade just went such a long way. Like I didn't, I only dunked in one time. Holy cow, that shade has a ton of pigment. Definitely be mindful. Okay, so as far as those two shades go, again, we're only two shades deep into this, but I actually really like both of those. I like that their undertones are so similar, and I really like that right in this region, like I barely even had to blend them together because they just effortlessly kind of flow one into the next, which is really, really nice. The next shade I was sitting here kind of debating if I wanted to go suntan or if I wanted to go magma, <laughs> liquid hot magma. I wonder how many people on the internet have said that already. <laughs> Anyways, I was trying to decide between those two um, colors. I, guys, I'm just having one of those days. But I think the main difference between the two, if I just go by swatches, Suntan has more of like a neutral to warm undertone, whereas Magma right here has more of like a red or a burnt kind of red auburn undertone to it. And based off of the colors that I'm using already on my eyes, I just think Suntan would look a little bit better. So I'm gonna take, I'm, I'm just still going in with the same brush and I'm gonna take Suntan and ever so gently, I am going to deepen up the inner and the outer uh, V's with this. So I'm just taking it and blending it on the outer V in an up direction just to make sure that I get that lift on my eye right there. And then gently kind of blending it in toward my crease. And then I'm doing the same thing on the inner V as well, just more so placing the color and then working it over from there. Ooh, that's nice. That actually, ooh. <gasps> oh, wow. Like, see how that totally transformed the, the crease color as well? God, that looks beautiful together. I really like how nicely these shades are all working together. And then I'm just lightly taking any leftover on my brush and kind of draping it through the uh, the center there just to help kind of connect the inner and the outer without making there be like a straight line of product. Has anybody else ever thought about tags, like the tags in your shirt? Who decided that we needed a tag in the back of our shirt? Who decided that the tag went in the back? Like, when did that become a thing? Like, oh yeah, the tag goes in the back. You know what? Not only does the tag go in the back, but it goes in the back, on your neck, inside of the shirt. It's like the most uncomfortable place <laughs> you could possibly put an itchy damn tag. Who decided that that was a good idea? That's a good question. Because if it was me, I mean, I'm thinking I probably wouldn't want it directly with my skin. I'd be like, yeah, it goes on the outside, right? Because then it's not gonna itch you so bad. Anybody else ever think of these things? <laughs> or is it just me? <laughs> uh, you know, just just asking, just wondering, curious. What do, what do other people think about when they do their makeup? <laughs> These are the things I think about. I'm also going to take, this is a uh, Morphe Y19, and I want to grab a little bit of the shade Beach right here. It's just a lighter tanned shade. And I want to take that and run it just on like the upper part toward the brow bone up here, just to make sure everything is blending into itself. Everything pretty much blended, I mean, perfectly on its own anyways but I just like having that nice light little blend out. All right, now from here, we're gonna start playing around with some shimmers. So I'm just gonna grab a little NYX glitter glue. I use this all the time. I just like to use this as more of a tacky, sticky base for anything shimmery to stick to because my uh, my eyelids are very inhospitable. They don't, they don't play well with anything. So this just gives the shadows a better chance at really clinging on and hopefully not falling out all over my face. And with that on, we're gonna take the shade Bliss, which is that duochrome shade and just pop that right in the center and then take the leftovers and kind of veil them towards the outside of the lid. <sighs> oh, that's beautiful. It's not nearly as like intense and impactful as I thought it would be as far as like the, the duochrome, like the, having a crazy shift, but it looks so stunning with the crease colors that I have. Wow, that's kind of shocking. I thought it would be a little bit more, um, a little bit more stark of a difference than that. But oh my gosh, that's a, oh my God, you guys, I love that color. It's like basic bitch, but with an edge. It's kind of, it's exactly me. Oh my God, that's exactly my jam. In the dead center though, I do want to take a little bit of the shade True Bronze right here. 
which is like a very, very intense um, gold kind of glittery flaky moment. And I'm just gonna take that and run it up through the center of the lid, just like so. Oh yeah, that's good, that's good, very, very good. So after much deliberation, I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Rhodium right here, which is kind of like a darker purpley kind of shimmer shade. It has depth, but it's still in like this kind of a family. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that on a Sigma E55, which is just a flat packer brush. And I wanna take this and ever so gently kind of pat it on to the inner and outer V just to give me a little bit more, ooh, that's pretty, just to give me a little bit more depth on my eyes, while at the same time, it's not gonna completely cover up the um, the shade Bliss that I already went in with, that duochrome, it's just gonna kind of complement it. I wanna take a little brush here, this is just a Morphe M506, and I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Deep Dive, which is this shade right here, and I want to run that on the lower lash line, and I'm doing this with a fluffy brush to try and dispense a little bit of the tone and the color because it is a very, very dark tone. But I wanna take that and just run it. I'm concentrating the majority of the color on the outer V and then just pulling the leftover up onto the outer V and kind of fluffing it in. And then underneath of it to diffuse it, just like I did up by the brow bone, I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Beach and run that on a fluffy brush. Underneath the eye, this step is a little bit more haphazard just because it's all about getting that light little blend going. Right, so I think that that's exactly perfect. I just needed a little bit more lift out here. And I think that that just did it. I, I dare I say, I think we kind of accomplished the goal. In the interest of time, I am gonna run off of camera really quickly and do this eye, put on my mascara, do all the good things. And um, I will be back on and we're gonna talk about the collection a little bit more. So hang tight and I'll be right back. All right, beautiful people, with that, the rest of my face is on and we're gonna go through my final thoughts, but I wanted to take a little while off of camera just so I could keep kind of playing through with textures and, and just blending and, and playing around with everything from the eyeshadows to the lips and just kind of, you know, developing my, my final thoughts for this video. So let's go ahead and start off with lips. Um, in the up close, I will go ahead and show you guys application and all of that because I did pick up two glosses from this collection. I have the shade Chestnut and the shade Caramel. And the two on the lips actually layered pretty nicely. I took Chestnut all over and then just a little bit of Caramel in the center just for a little bit of dimension. Overall, I love the way that the lip pairs with this collection. Um, at first, I was a little bit apprehensive with the depth of the shade Chestnut. I wasn't sure if I would like not only the depth of it, on me personally, but also with the palette. I just wasn't sure, you know, how they would play together. But I think, like I said, in the end, everything came together really well. While I was off of camera, it did give me a little bit of time to kind of wrap up some thoughts as far as these products. So the first thing I'm actually going to touch on are the lips because in the last collection that she launched, I think it was her love collection, I want to say. It was like all the pink packaging right around Valentine's Day. And uh, this, the lips in that collection, I wasn't a huge fan of. They just didn't have like enough for me. And it's interesting because for as much as I didn't like I didn't hate them I didn't love them they were just like very if for me these ones I actually do really like um, I like the color I like the undertones I, I like that they're a little bit more rich in pigment than what I saw from that collection um, in terms of the the consistency and how they feel they are a little bit heavy but I like that they don't carry with them any like stickiness or anything but they, they do have a little bit of weight to them so you can feel them but they're not uncomfortable and then as far as the palette goes I I did touch on pretty much everything I wanted to say during application, but as just like an overview, I do like the overall consistency, the blendability. I like the color cohesion and like the, the story cohesion that this has. I, I actually really appreciate the, the fact that it, you can tell that there's a central point with this, but that they did then kind of play around with it. You know, you get a little bit of a duochrome, you get a little bit of a, a pop color here, a couple different types or versions or undertones of like that gold shimmer color. And overall, I think that I enjoy that aspect of of it more than I thought I would. And then we can really briefly touch on this. I think it's horrible. <laughs> you don't need it. It's not good. I didn't like any aspect of this from the purpose, the color, the consistency, application. Just nothing about this to me worked even a little bit. And I don't think it's worth, I, I, not only do I not think it's worth $55, I don't think this is even worth purchasing like in any price point like bracket because there just, there was nothing good about this. Again, just my personal opinion. And with that, you guys, the video has officially come to a close. Don't forget, like I said, at the
the beginning. Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments. And just thank you guys so much again for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys all have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Something. What am I going to get to kill this fucking fly with? Some chopsticks. I'm about ready to pull a Mr. Miyagi on your ass and fucking nip you. Hey, you oh! He hit me. <laughs> I hate bugs so much. I hate bugs because they move quick. It's the same reason that I don't, I like to look at fish, I like to look at birds, but they freak me out because they're little and they move really fucking fast. And it's the same theory that I've got with bugs. I don't like them because they move really, really fast and they're really little and they can mess you up really fast. And I don't like it. I don't like when things are that much quicker than like the humans, <laughs> the humans, me. <laughs> Which to be fair, I mean, at this rate, a sloth is faster than me, but I still don't like little quick things like bugs. You know how sometimes you just want to like run your fingers through your hair and like, and like mess it all up. Do you ever get the feeling that you need to do that with your eyebrows and just like, like get in there and just like, like noogie your eyebrows? Am I the only one? Probably. You know what? Let's just, <laughs> probably don't need to talk about it.